Okay, we're going to do our update on TLT, which is the long bond, very correlated with the 10-year treasury yields. And we're also going to do uh, the dollar index, um, two that are very sort of correlated. We'll start with TLT. Um, as I've been saying on Twitter, this looks like it was a weekly cycle low. So this is the daily chart. But the, this daily cycle low on day 27, that was June 16th, looks like it was a weekly cycle low. And so that and we'll look at that on the weekly chart but we're starting on a daily here we are on day 26 so this is an this is an important sort of pattern just to observe this and i talked about this in the previous video check out the description uh if i have a link to the previous video in there and it is july 26 by the way so it is the day before the fomc uh, announcement they're going to announce 2 p.m tomorrow market is expecting 75 basis points increase there's some chatter about one base, one full percentage point increase. And of course, anything lower than 75 bips will be seen as dovish. I mean, anything more than that will be seen as hawkish. But if it's one, there's already been, if it's just one full point, there's already been chatter about it. I mean, imagine if they did something like a point and a quarter or a point and a half. That would be really interesting. So either way, we may have gotten our daily cycle high for TLT on day 24, which was July 22nd, we had a gap up, right? And then we had, you know, a pullback. Again, a, a high, a, a, a upper wick is always a pullback on a lower time frame. And then the next day, right? So, so we had a gap up. So that's, I'll just draw these lines to, to notice. This is really important sort of understanding price action here. So make sure you understand the candles I'm talking about here. I'll zoom in. So we had this day, which was July 21st, right? Next day we gapped up July 22nd. So, so we closed at $116.59. And then we opened the next day at $118.29. So almost a $2 gap open. So like this area, that's where the gap is. So we gapped up, we went higher, but then we pulled back. Again, that's your... Pull back on a lower time frame, this upper wick. And then the next day, what did we do? We gapped down. And I said this on Twitter. I mentioned this in the previous video as well. It's very likely we're going to fill this gap. It's 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 a tendency of markets to to fill gaps, right? But you can see this was a gap, right? So we, we closed here. We opened here. So you had your gap from there. And, and that's where I'm drawing these lines to give you a sense of like, to show you visually the gap, right? So you had this gap and you continued higher and then what did you do? You fill the gap, right? You can see this candle here fills that gap. So that's what happened here, right? You had this gap open and then you had a gap down open. So you fill the gap, you fill the gap up with a gap down and you came up, made a double top. So this is, this is a low this is a high that's just a couple cents lower than this one so this is a high at 119.27 this is a high of 119.24 so we missed it by three cents and we failed really hard now this could reverse really this could reverse to a bullish revert like we can get a bullish reversal tomorrow with the fomc meeting depending on what, what's announced it's going to be a big catalyst but failing that we would have our high on day 24 you can see the previous cycle ended on day 27, the one before that, day 30, before that, 26. So it would seem that we're pretty close, right? So this is day 26, right? And the FOMC meeting tomorrow will be day 27. So maybe we get our daily, maybe tomorrow actually gives us our daily cycle low, right? We get a big whoosh down and then we continue higher. Or maybe we get a few more days of downside into next week, you know, those couple days after the Fed meeting. But this is a close one. This is one to watch closely for sure. And this technical, like this understanding gaps is super important. Whenever you see some, whenever I see something gap down or excuse me, gap up, I'm always generally pretty cautious about jumping in until the gap has been filled. And in this case, the gap did get filled. And if we move on to the weekly, this is week six. So one, two, three, four, five, six of the weekly cycle. So We've already been rallying for six weeks, technically, and that's important to understand because a weekly cycle could ha get its high on any week, really. And so we did not make a new high this week. The, the high is still on week five. And so it's completely possible that this weekly cycle 
could top out this week, right? This we could make a high this week and then just continue to just and then just start to kind of roll over from there, right? So you imagine something like that and then we roll over and then we make, right? So that's important to understand. We're not super early in the weekly cycle, but we're I mean we're also not late, which is the most bearish condition possible. Like if you get a, a bearish reversal, right? Because that means you have a lot of time to decline because you're not super late in the cycle. Um, and if you look at the monthly, I've been calling this out, we have a monthly swing low in place. So this is a monthly swing low. As long as we're above 117.34. And notice we closed at 117.48. So we're still above that by just a hair. So like this daily cycle decline is going to happen. We know that's just a feature of markets. We're going to get this pullback. It's going to be a question of, can we hold a higher low on that lower time frame? And can we recover back above 117.34? That's the number I'll really be looking for. If we can't get back above that, then we're not making higher highs on the monthly level. And that becomes your sort of bull or bear line in my mind. Again, I think we'll almost certainly dip below that number. It's a question of if we can recover it relatively quickly. And so now I'll move on to the Dixie, the dollar index. So we're st we're we're still in is it daily cycle one yes right june 27th that's june. yeah so this so this is actually daily cycle number two out of the weekly cycle so if we look at the weekly chart this is week eight i've marked this red line as the next cpi print because i think that's going to be your next kind of big catalyst after tomorrow obviously and you can see it's an inside week this week week eight we have our top so far on week six, but the dollar can move really fast, right? It can move, especially with a catalyst like the FOMC coming. So we could have a bullish move that makes a new high above this week, and then we're right back to our uptrend. Um, so that's the that's the thing here. This is a potential weekly cycle top on week six, which would be very bearish. But tomorrow was going to tell us everything, right? Do we cover some ground here? And then it's like, okay, well, we're going to go back up. Or do we get a reversal off of this green week that started here? And that would mean making a low below 106 spot 069. That's the sort of ballpark level we're looking at here. And again, keep in mind the dollar index is only month 18 of the three year cycle, which is 36 months. So we're right about halfway through. Um, so we could still run for many more months, actually. Um, and, it, and we could still get a pretty precipitous decline into that low, but you have to watch. It, it could still go much higher than anyone could, is expecting, is my thinking. 